All right, let me show you an image here so you get kind of an appreciation for um, all of this. Polar coordinate system, you know how usually if we were to write a, do a grid for, um, uh, for Cartesian coordinates, we just would make vertical lines and horizontal lines, and, and their crossing points is kind of where, you know, if I had one comma two, then I'd go over one block and up two blocks. Well, polar coordinates is, is more like a system of concentric circles. All right. Now, it would be better if I could use dotted lines here, but I'm not that talented to make both dotted lines while also drawing a circle. So this is what you get. Um, so let's say this is a distance of 1, this is a distance of 2, this is 3, and this is 4 from the origin. <clears throat> um, that's what these circles are. If I, if I had a um, polar coordinate that was like 1.5 comma, and then let's just say 60 degrees, which is also the same thing as saying 1.5 comma pi over 3. All right, that point would be one and a half units out, so in this region, and I would stay in a circle, and then it would be at a 60 degree angle. So it would be that point right there. All right. If I had a uh, 4 comma, um, let's say 135 degrees, which is the same as 4 comma, uh, 3 pi over 4. All right, well, that would be on the 4 unit um, circle and be all the way over here uh, at 135 degrees. So that my point would be right about there. All right, and then again, this is just a way to label points. Um, and this goes infinitely out. So we have infinitely many concentric circles that just kind of expand out from the origin. Um, and we have infinitely many angle measures too, between 0 and 360 now, obvious, or uh, 0 and 2 pi. Obviously we typically use um, more standard values, but it's there's all sorts of radials out here that would intersect. So your polar coordinate system actually ends up looking more like this, where we kind of find intersections of angles and these concentric circles. Alright, I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what polar coordinates are in general. So uh, let's do two things. Let's try and go from polar to Cartesian coordinates, and then let's try to go from Cartesian to polar coordinates. Um, and I think if you get that, that'll help a lot. All right, so we're going to start with, um, let's do, what do I want to do? Let's do uh, the polar coordinates. So polar is, let's say, 3 comma... Um, Let's do 2 pi over 3. And we want to know the Cartesian for that. All right, where do we start? Well, to go from polar to Cartesian, we use this. So we're trying to get x, we're trying to get y, and we know what r and theta are. So I'm going to do um, essentially 3 cosine 2 pi over 3 and then 3 sine 2 pi over 3. Now we want to try to be as exact or have exa as exact answers as possible. And so um, if you hopefully you notice that 2 pi over 3 is an angle that we have in our unit circle so I would expect that you use an exact value here. So this would be 3 times okay 2 pi over 3 just as a reminder is uh, 120 degrees. So if I were to draw a sketch, it would be over here. And uh, if you remember, the cosine of that would be negative one half. So this would be three times negative one half. Sine of two pi over three is the y value, which is radical three over two. So this is three times radical three over two. So now I just multiply that out, so I'm going to get negative 3 halves, which is the same thing as negative 1.5. That would be fine either way. Um, technically, you want to stay consistent, though. So since I know this one's going to have to remain a fraction, 3 radical 3 over 2, I probably want to leave it in fraction form instead of having 1 to be a decimal and 1 to be a fraction. Okay, so hopefully, polar to Cartesian works pretty well.
Okay, let's see if we can go backwards. So now what I'm going to do is um, take a point that's in Cartesian, and that point is going to be uh, radical 3 comma negative 1. Okay, and, and when I'm going from Cartesian to polar, I really want to make sure to think about, okay, where is that point as far as which, which quadrant it's in? Well, radical 3 comma negative 1 is in this quadrant. So I want to make sure when I get my answer in polar coordinates that it seems to be something that would be in the fourth quadrant. All right, so we need to find r and we need to find theta. We know that r squared, from our formula up here, we know that r squared is um, x squared plus y squared. So radical 3 squared plus negative 1 squared. So this is going to be 3 plus 1 which is 4, that means r is 2. Alright, so uh, when I go to write my polar coordinates, I know that my radius is going to be 2, so 2 comma something. Alright, now, uh, I need to do, to find theta, again, based on our formula that we wrote down up here, I need to do y over inverse tangent of y over x. So inverse tangent of negative 1 over radical 3. I'm going to put that in my calculator. When I put that in my calculator, um, I'm going to get, and I know this because of the system here, I'm going to get, uh, this is radical, essentially this is radical 3 and this is negative 1, and then we found that the radius is 2. Alright, so my angle is actually going to be um, a 30 degree reference angle down in the fourth quadrant. So that's going to be, it's going to tell me that inverse tangent of this is, if I do it in degrees, it would be negative uh, 30 degrees. If I do that in radians in my calculator, it's going to give me a decimal value. It's typically best to leave it in degree value and then convert it to radians um, after knowing what the value is. So this is negative 30 degrees. So I could write that as um, negative pi over 6. Oops. But if our instructions said to keep it um, as a positive angle, then I'd want then I would just have to make sure to add 2 pi to this. So go a full circle around. Negative pi over 6 is the same stopping position as 11 pi over 6. Um, if they don't tell you that it has to be a positive angle, it's okay to leave it as 2 comma negative pi over 6. That's completely fine. Hopefully that was um, a good enough tutorial for you. Um, if you have any extra questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them.